In this video, we are gonna take this photo and we're gonna turn it into this photo with mostly Lightroom and we might jump into a little bit of Photoshop right at the end there. Well, hi folks, my name is Matt Glaskowski and I wanna welcome you to my photo makeover series where I don't use my photos, I use your photos and I basically go through my editing process as if it were my photo, all right? So this photo is from Arnold, so a big thanks to Arnold for submitting this one and let's go ahead and dive in here. So we're gonna start off inside of Lightroom. Um, I think first thing I want to do to this one is crop it in a little bit, straighten it. So let's go to the crop tool here. I think uh, we'll kind of rotate it around. I'm using I'm using this line back here as a horizon line. So it's a little bit tough. You know, all we really have to go through is the go off of is this area. So I can just grab my straighten tool and just drag right along there. See if we can straighten that up a little bit. I think that looks good. Uh, I wanna crop some of the top left side off of this. Um, I'm gonna be pretty careful not to intersect with this lake here, all right? So I don't, wanna, I don't wanna cut that lake off. I think it's nice to be able to see the edges of it as it goes off into the landscape in the background. And, uh, and I do think I wanna pull in a little bit from the bottom right, but not too much as you'll see when we hit the shadow slider, uh, there's detail up here that it's gonna be a focal point in our photo, so we're gonna wanna keep it. All right, let's go ahead and close our crop. Let's hit the basic panel. This is going to be where I think most of the uh, most of the action is going to happen here. Uh, we'll go grab our shadow slider. That's that's the biggest problem. And th this is, you know, this is as as usual and and kind of normal of a landscape photo as we get um, is is you get this really bright sky, and you don't want to develop the rest of your photo based on the sky. So you've got to keep the the detail on there. So Heather did exactly what she should have, unless you're going to use a graduated filter in the field. I'm not a huge fan of them um, anymore. I'd much rather, I, I, I feel I get much better results by doing it here inside of Lightroom. So we're always going to have to come in here and open up the shadows, which is fine. Um, rather than pull back on the highlights, because if I pull back on the highlights too much, and it's really going to depend on the photo, but especially in this photo, when there's an edge, you'll start to see it. You'll start to see halos around some of those edges there. So you gotta be careful with your highlights. So if I do have something like that, that starts to happen, I'll go and grab the graduated filter and let's bring the exposure down and let's just go ahead and pop that down right over here. Okay, we can spread it out a little bit so it's a nice, smooth, soft transition. Um, I can make it a little bit darker rather than darker. Um, and I can even pull back the highlights a little bit. Um, I'm also going to go in here and add a little bit of blue. It's going to bring back some of that blue in the sky that was up there. Okay. And let's go ahead and close the grad filter. I'm going to warm the entire photo here, which I think is going to give it you know, this. We're, we're looking at the sun. So this should have a warm feeling in the photo. Um, the sun is is casting a warm light over the whole scene, so it should have a warm feeling. So we're gonna we're gonna go with that. Let's see here. I think that's looking pretty good. I might go back to my sky, go to the grad filter, uh, go back to that sky, and I might even pull a little bit more blue into it. After I warmed up the photo, I lost some of that blue there. So we'll go in there and add some blue up to the sky. I think a little bit of clarity will help out here as well. So we'll boost up that clarity. Clarity is contrast, but Contrast is contrast is going to hit the whites and the blacks, where clarity is going to kind of hit everything in between, which is you know, all this stuff in here, which is not white or black. Clarity is really going to start to bring out in the photo. So that's what I'm looking for. I don't want to crank it up because it it's going to look fake, but just a little bit of a uh, little bit of edge there. Uh, let's see here. So I think we're looking good on that front. Let's hit the backslash key. We can get a uh, kind of a preliminary before and after. So that's before, and that's after. So looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and close basic. We'll head down here to detail. And I always zoom in more toward the foreground because especially if I have foreground, that's gonna be mainly what I'm concerned about here. So we'll zoom in on the foreground here, especially these rocks. Uh, I will crank up my amount slider uh, as far as I can get before I start to see the little squigglies, all right? And these are the little squigglies that you start to see on the rock. So I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. I'll see if I can add any detail and I can, again, I'm gonna crank it up until, until it looks artificial. And artificial is gonna to be too textured, you know? And this, as you can see, you know, if you just take a look, it starts to look too textured. So you don't wanna to add too much of it. It's hard to give me an exact number, but hopefully I can show you what over sharpening looks like. And you know, something like that, that's over sharpening. So we're definitely gonna pull it back, okay? 
All right, so we got a little bit of detail thrown in there. Uh, a couple finishing touches for this one. I'll do, do a few finishing touches inside of Lightroom, and then I'm going to jump to Photoshop for something. So I'm going to go grab my brush. I think this is such a key part of our landscape photos is, is we have to direct people to, to what we want them to see here. So I think Heather did great. We've got foreground here. I really like, I like how this, this wall leads over, you know, kind of brings us into the background there. So um, I think we did really good. We're just going to use the brush, a little bit of exposure here, and we're going to help, we're going to help this line that we have going through the photo. So I'm just going to hit the left bracket key make my brush a little bit smaller and just paint right along that wall. All right. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you're never going to see the, you're never going to see the results of having it perfect. Uh, I'll go in here to my navigator panel for a second. And you can see, so, you know, I can, I can zoom in and I can try to be perfect. And the way that I think of, of things like this would be, um, the, how big are you going to print it? You know, is this destined for maybe your, your, your computer? Is it only going to get shared on social media or maybe only printed, you know, 13 by 19, 11 by 17, somewhere around there? Nobody's really ever going to get close enough to see that. Now, if it's going to get printed huge, then you might want to spend a little bit more time. So that's how I kind of decide how much time I'm going to spend on stuff like that. I uh, will add a little bit of warmth to that and a little bit of clarity. And let's go over here to the foreground. I'm going to click new and we're going to add a little bit of exposure. And what we're going to do is just paint on this foreground. This is where we're standing. This is, this is kind of the, you know, you want to put people in place, kind of make them feel like they're standing there. This is where we're standing. This is why we're going to brighten that up a little bit. Okay. So while the adjustment brush, uh, it, it's not necessarily that we're going to spend a long time with the adjustment brush, but I think it's some of the most important changes we do. If you take a look, that's before, that's after. All right, let's go ahead and hit close. Uh, inside of Lightroom, probably my last finishing touch would be a pretty strong vignette. Let's tame those edges and uh, let's really bring people into the photo. Like so, as I see that, I think I can go back over here to my basic panel and maybe push my exposure a little bit more. Overall, just make the whole photo brighter. Uh, if we wanna see the Lightroom changes, backslash key is before, backslash key is after. Pretty big change. We're gonna do one last little thing here. This one gets, this one starts to push the artistic realm of the photo a little bit. So I personally have no problem doing it to my photos, but not everybody, not everybody wants to do that. But I think I'm gonna jump to Photoshop. I wanna show you a technique that I use quite a bit um, when it comes to finishing off my photos. So just hop over here to Photoshop. And while it's doing that, how about a quick word from our sponsor, which by the way, is me. I'd really appreciate it if you were on the YouTube page and just clicked on subscribe, which really is just a way of following me on YouTube. It helps me get the word out. And when I do new videos, you'll always know about it. So that way you won't miss any and you won't have to go searching around for them. Okay. Now back over to that Photoshop stuff. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. All right. Now, the hue saturation adjustment layer isn't doing anything. So let's go ahead. I'm going to keep it. I want it to be warm. You can see it's, it's going to be, everything's going to be saturated here. So I want to boost that saturation. <laughs> you know what? If you like super saturated photos, that's actually pretty cool. It's not too bad, but um, I, rather than do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to bring in, we have the sun. It, it's not, it, it's in the realm of possibility that there's this warm light being cast onto onto this foreground area here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to this, uh, we're going to go to, to, to this mask. And, uh, and what I'm going to first do is I want to invert the layer mask. All right. I want to, I want to make the layer mask where it's white right now. I'm just going to press command or control I, I am going to make it black. Then I'm going to press B for my brush tool I hit the right bracket key, make it really big. And then I'm just going to kind of paint kind of a line from where the sun is toward that foreground here. Okay. And so you can see kind of looks like that. So I'm bringing back part of that hue saturation adjustment layer here. I'm going to actually make it brighter, a little bit more saturated, but here's the key. So it doesn't start to look too saturated. What I can do is change this blend mode and I can go from normal down here to color dodge and reduce the opacity a little bit. It'll start, it, it, color dodge is really cool 
at making making anything that's any greenery, whether it's a tree, whether it's grass, any any greenery greenery in your photo, it's really good at making it look like it's got some light on it, especially some warm light if we're using this hue and saturation adjustment that we did here. So it really blends in those changes pretty well. If, uh, if my brush wasn't good enough, I can go back over here to the mask, go into the properties panel for that, and I can even feather it. And you can see all that feathering is doing on that mask there, it's just making it more blurry. All right, and it's gonna help spread it out a little bit across the photo there. So if you take a look, that's before, that's after. Uh, I might reduce the opacity. I might come back in here, maybe punch up the, uh, maybe punch it up a little bit, add a little bit more warmth. Right about there. And then, you know, depending on how much you want to add, you know, go grab your brush tool, just paint on it with white, you know, maybe add a little bit of more to, or a little bit more, um, you know, kind of go along some of these little hills and everything and see if you can just kind of touch a little bit of light onto them because we do have the sun there. And I think it does add to the photo to be able to pull that in. All right. Now to get back to Lightroom, all we got to do is just go file, save. That's going to save a copy of that raw photo back over into Lightroom. Once we get over there, Let's go take a look. So we have our before photo and I'm just gonna go to the develop module and hit reset on that before photo. So here is our before photo and there is our after. So once again, that's the before and then there's our after. Huge thanks to Heather for sending in your photo and folks, if you like these videos, please do me a huge favor. Just head over to the YouTube page, hit that little subscribe button on there. It's just an easy way to follow me on YouTube so that way when I release new videos, you'll be able to find them a lot easier.